Hello from Fairy Tales and Fables. I was asked recently to show how I made my armatures for my mouse. So today I am going to demonstrate how they are done. But remember, this is my way, not necessarily the way everyone else does it. So hopefully this will give you a rough idea of how you can make it your own. Uh, following this video will be another one demonstrating how I actually build the mice around the armature. So that will be following. This is my little mouse. This is what he will look like when he's eventually finished. Okay. And he's quite bendy so you can move him around and change his position. First of all, I'm going to use 22 gauge wire. Okay, he's got little toes, little fingers, so he's going to need very, very thin wire. To make his little hands, this is the hand part of his armature. I'm going to use the 22 gauge and I'm going to make them approximately 12 centimetres long and I'm going to need five of those for his five little fingers. For his leg armature and his tail I'm going to be using the same 22 gauge and I'm going to be measuring it to 14 centimetres. Again five of these for his five little toes and I'm going to want 22 centimetres of the 22 gauge and that is for his tail. Okay, so in order to make his little arm armature part, you're going to have to, or the way I do it, is I pinch that all together and then I twist it. And it's a bit tricky and you might stab yourself in the hand, so be careful. But I find if you splay them out, like so. You can twist them all pretty evenly then, right up until you've got little fingers for his little hands. There we go. Okay, and you'll do the same to the other side, obviously. Okay, so now to make the armature for the legs. I've already twisted one side, as I did for the, the hands. But with this one, I'm going to add the tail to the centre. I'm going to twist it round just a couple of times. Okay, and then I'm going to twist it in with the actual legs itself, because that will help secure the tail in there. A little bit more. You might want your pliers because again it's very spiky. There we go and you can see then that the tail is quite securely fixed onto the armature. Give them a little twist. Lay the toes out. If you find you've got some of the toes are a bit longer than they should be, just trim them up, twist the tail around, and that's basically how we do the armature for the legs. Okay, so now we have to wrap the armatures. As you can see, He's nicely covered, he's nicely wrapped, and he's wrapped in normal knitting wool. I like to go for a reasonably flesh-like colour, but it, again, it's entirely up to you. You might want him to have brown paws. Anyway, so to start, I'm gonna start with the feet armature, and I'm gonna take my piece of wool, and I'm gonna wrap it round, and I'm gonna tie it in a knot. But I'm not going to cut the end off, I'm going to keep that end, that's important. And then basically, I wrap the wool around the armature reasonably tightly. Okay. 
until I get to the first little toe and I'm going to move the other ones out of the way because it makes it very easy this is quite a tricky thing to do because it is spiky and because it's easy to get the wool caught up in the end of the toes and it does all sorts of horrible things so I'm going to wrap it around the toe not quite to the tip and then I'm going to bend that up and over and pinch it down tightly because that will stop me from having a, a nasty sharp end and it holds the wool a bit more secure but there is a little problem here when you wrap it around it can easily slide off or separate and then that will give you a loopy bit that's not the end of the world because when you've painted the glue we're going to paint some glue over this to secure it and when you do that and it's dried you can trim that off but ideally you want to bring it back just a little bit so that you don't get that loopy effect you pull it right back into the finger or the toe so again to demonstrate wind it round nearly to the end hold it tight between your fingers bend that over pinch it tight and then hold pulling the wall back so you don't get the loopy bit and take it round I've got a loopy bit there look so there we go take it round back over the finger or the toe sorry whichever you're doing and push that one out of the way and so we go on until we finished the whole hand. Okay, so I finished doing all of my toes and I've pushed them all together, but I'm now going to just wind it around the foot like that and then take it back there we go and you keep winding right back till you get to the tail okay so I've now wound the other side of his feet and you would do the same principle if you were doing his hands but when you have wound it and you've got back to the center on his little arms you would then use the thread that you've wound and the loose bit that you left hanging you would tie that in a knot and that will secure the wool and that would be your hand armature finished but for this one I'm gonna go on because obviously I've got his tail now his tail I am just literally gonna wind right the way to the point I'm gonna probably give myself about a centimetre, centimetre and a half and bend that over again to secure the wool and to stop there being any sharp spiky bits and then I'm going to wind back over that one right back to where the tail joins the leg armature Now you might find that this gets in your way winding back over so what I tend to do is just very carefully roll that up and that makes it easier for you to work around it. Okay so when I get right back to the beginning <clears throat> you'll notice that little mousey's tail gets wider as it gets to the tip uh, as it gets to the join onto the body so in order to do this I will just wind back over about two-thirds of the way along the tail and then very carefully try not to have too much of a step winding back you can always you know scruff that a bit to try and take any steps or jumps out 
there we go and that should give you the right thickness for a little mouse and then what I'm going to do now is tie that off and then I can trim those ends So the final part of the armature now what I do you'll notice we have some little bits of wire showing through just where we've bent it over the top so what I'll do is I put I use a permanent pen I've got a permanent brown pen and I just do a little mark just on those little bits of wire and make it look like he's got little toenails So that disguises those little bits of wire at the same time as giving him some little bits of detail to his feet. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the whole thing in some glue because that will help to set the, the um, wool where it needs to be and it also makes it that little bit stronger when you're using it, making it flexible or whatever it is you're going to do. So what I need is I have a little bit of PVA glue and a little tiny bit of water and I'm just mixing that together to make quite a runny consistency and I've got a piece of greaseproof paper because you'll find that this doesn't stick to the greaseproof paper and then I'm very carefully going to coat the whole thing in the PVA glue. And that will still enable you to be able to bend the armature. But like I said, it will keep it from going fluffy. It will help to keep it strong. Turn it over, do the other side. So when you are bending his little hands and his feet around you're not going to be making him all fluffy and causing him to get all untidy. And make sure you get in all of the fibres. There we go. Just move that over a bit. Same with the hands. And that will absorb right into all the fibres. So there we go, one set of hands on one set of feet and we just leave that to dry for a few hours okay so a few hours later it's all nice and dry you can see how the fibers are all being held together with the glue that's been painted on but at the same time it's still very bendy and very purple. and that's how we will have the feet okay and they're all ready to go so then my next video will be explaining how we build the mice up completely and how you can end up with a little figure all of your own okay so happy new year from fairy tales and fables and happy crafting <laughs>